Hello everybody and welcome back to another video in this Pi game tutorial series. In today's video, I want to be showing you guys how we can create an animated character such as the one that you see in the canvas right now. When I press my key binds, he walks to the left and right and he is fully animated. So this is exactly what the outcome of today's tutorial should look like. Now, if you've been following this tutorial series from the very beginning, then the code that is up in the editor right now should be familiar to you. Because it is the code that we looked at in the second episode in this tutorial series where we looked at how we can create movement of a character. So if you want to get this code or any other code that I use during the tutorial, then make sure to check out the first link in the description, which is where you'll find my GitHub page. And that is where I upload all the code from all the tutorials. So that being said, let's get into programming this um, animated character. So let's see where we are starting off. Uh, we are going to use as a basis um, the code from the second tutorial. And this is where we learned how we can create this small moving dot. But instead of a moving dot, we want an animated character. So the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the code very slightly. The first thing I want to do is to delete the possibility to move up and down because I only have pictures which show my character moving left and right. So we'll leave that out. And another thing that I will do is I am going to um, increase the time delay of my loop just to make sure that the character animation is a bit slower. You'll see that will make a difference at the end. All right, so you need to make sure that you have an image or more specifically several images of a um, animated character. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean by that. If I open this in the Explorer, you will see that I have um, that I have a, um, a file over here, which has the uh, Python file, which we, are, which we have open in the editor right this moment. And in addition to that, I also have a file called hero. And this is where we store all the images of our character moving left and right. So I'll leave a link also in the description to where I got these images from. And I'll also give credit to the maker of these images. So if you want to download the same images, make sure to check the link in the description. All right, now um, having said that, we can go ahead and um, do our first move, which is that we want to load in all the images which we have um, right now uh, looked at in the folder. So the way we load in images is with the following code block. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in to spend more time explaining and less time writing it in. So over here we have several lines of code. You'll see over here we have a variable and it is assigned uh, the standing image. And the standing image is basically this one. We'll be using this one for our animation when no keybind is pressed and we simply want to show the character from the front. And in addition to that, we have a variable called left, which is an array of images which show our character moving to the left. So you'll see it's these images. And right now you'll see if I open them sequentially uh, in my um, editor, you'll see there is like the slight moving motion. And that is exactly what happens in our game. The game simply shows these images sequentially and that's what makes us think or makes it seem like it is moving. So one problem with uh, loading the images in this method which I've shown over here is that it is a quite a long and tedious code block and there is a smarter way to do it and I'm going to show you by loading in the images uh, which show to the right using uh, this other method. So we have the images showing to the left now here's the images showing to the right. I've simply uh, created a for loop and since I have nine images which show to the right, 
uh, which are these over here on the left hand side of the screen, which I've just highlighted. And you'll see that these images are um, named as R, which stands for right, and they have an index. And right here, I am just loading them in by creating an empty array or an empty list more specifically. And then we are simply appending the index, uh, which corresponds to the index over here, one, two, three, four, and so on, um, to the uh, file name or the path name more specifically. So these are basically two ways of doing the same thing. Um, so over here, we've done it for the left uh, using one way, and for the images which show to the right, we've done it another way. And I just want to make sure that you have both ways, um, that you've seen both ways of doing it. And one more module that I need to import is the module OS, mod, uh, import OS, because we're going to be using it over here. All right, so now that we have the images loaded in, the next thing we want to do is we want to um, create two variables. Uh, we want to create the variable um, move, move left. And we want to have another variable which is called move right. Right, and both of them are going to be given the default value of false. Because, of course, when you're starting up your game, you're not going to be moving in either direction unless uh, until you press your first keybind. So, by default, you're moving in neither direction. And then we are going to um, uh, create, we're going to add these two variables into the movement code block down here. And when we press the left key bind, we of course want to have left equal to true. And when we press the right key bind, we want our right uh, variable to be equal to true. Okay, and if we are not pressing any key bind, then we're gonna write else, and we're gonna make this an elif, elif. And we're gonna write else, move left, is false and move right is false. Okay, so now if we go ahead and run this, you'll see nothing will have changed. Um, we haven't added any of the pictures in yet, but uh, we still have this white dot and we don't want this white dot anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. Uh, we are gonna delete the variable radius because we don't need the radius of the circle anymore. And we do not need the um, ball showing up anymore. Okay, so having deleted that, we are now going to create a function and call it draw game. Um, function, so define draw underscore game, and it takes no arguments, and it is going to um, it is going to include all the code which draws our game. Uh, and the reason why I'm declaring a, f a function for this is quite simply because I don't want to overcrowd the main loop. Uh, I don't want there to be too much code. I want to be uh, the uh, code to be nice and orderly. So we are going to go ahead and um, cut all the code which has anything to draw, anything to do with drawing the game into the draw function. Okay, so now we have that in our draw function. And of course, we need to call the function in our main loop once to make sure that we are making use of it. So draw game. There we go. And in our function, which we have now created, we want to somehow create the mechanic which allows us to iterate through these images so that it seems like the character is being animated. And the way we do that is by creating a new index. We're gonna call it step index. And this is going to be the index which allows us to go through the array of images which show to the left and to the right. And we're gonna be using this array to sort of display these images sequentially. 
You'll see what I mean with it in a second. So in our function, we're going to write global, global, um, step index. And we are going to make a couple of if else statements. So if the step index is greater than, or, oh, hold on, greater than or equal to the number nine. Oh, hold on, what's wrong? Yeah, nine. Then we want to reset the step index. Now, the reason why I'm resetting the step index if we exceed the value of nine is quite simply because I only have nine images showing to the left and nine images showing to the right. So once we have iterated through nine images, we need to reset the counter to zero. Um, so that is exactly why I am um, resetting this um, index to zero over here. The next thing we need to do is we need to have an if statement for move left. So if move left is true, then the code after the colon is going to be executed. And the code after the colon is simply going to help us display the um, image which goes to the left. So that's win blit and then left, left. And since we have an array over here, we're going to use square brackets and it is going to display the image at the corresponding index. So step index. And then the second argument we need to pass in here is the coordinates of uh, our of where the image should be displayed. And that's simply going to be x, y. Then we need to do something very, very similar for our move right. Um, so if, or more specifically elif, we move right, then we want to win dot blit and then we want to display the image um, of our character moving to the right. So we're going to uh, reference the variable right and we're going to reference specifically the right uh, image at the step index. And of course it should be displayed at our x, y coordinate. Um, and of course we also need to add one to the step index uh, so that we move on to the next image every single time the code is executed. So step index plus one over here and we also need to increment the step index in our move left, uh, move right um, code block. So then if we are not moving to the left or to the right we need to write an else statement for our stationary stationary position, which is going to be win blit and the stationary image. And we're going to display the stationary image at the coordinate x, y as well. So let me just quickly go through the code to see if I've made any mistakes, but it looks fine uh, for the moment. Um, let me go ahead and just quickly think if there's any mistakes that I made. Oh yeah, there's one more thing that we do need to do, and that is in the main loop over here in the else statement, we need to make sure that if we um, move in a direction and then lift our finger from the keyboard and um, are stationary again, we need to reset the step index so that the next time we move, it will start from the very first image again. So let's go ahead and see what we have achieved. Now we have our small character and if I press left and right, you'll see that he is animated beautifully. Um, and when I move right, he moves right. When I move left, he moves left. And he is beautifully um, animated the way that we wanted him to be at the very beginning of this tutorial. So there is actually uh, a couple more things that I want to show you, how you can tweak this a little more to make it a bit more fancy. So one thing that you can change is you can increase the delay of the main loop 
Um, let's increase it to somewhere like 100 milliseconds. And you'll see that now our character moves much slower. Uh, I hope you can see that in the video, um, but now you can see that the character moves a lot slower than it did before because we've quite simply increased the time of the while loop. All right, so if we go ahead and uh, reset that again to the value it was before, um, another thing we can do is we can display the individual images of our character for a um, long, for more frames. Um, so the way we can do that is by saying that the step index is uh, larger. Let's make it um, somewhere like, uh, hold on, let me just quickly think about this. Um, we're gonna make it 36. And we are going to then floor divide this by three. Uh, I think I got this right. So what happens now is that every single one of our images is going to be displayed for three iterations of the while loop so that um, it looks a bit more smooth. I hope that's gonna work. Let's see if it does. So here we have our character and, um, oh, hold on. I made a small mistake. Um, I think, yeah, this needs to be equal to four. Yeah, now this should work. Yeah, now this should work. Um, I hope that you can see this uh, in the video when after it is rendered, but now every single um, image that we have to animate this character is being displayed for four iterations of the while loop. So it looks like he's moving slower even though he's moving just as fast as we did as he did before. All right, so <laughs> I hope you learned something new in this tutorial. Um, I try to not make it too long, but um, animating characters is in fact something which <laughs> isn't quite as easy as you might think at, uh, at first sight. So if this video helped you out, then make sure to leave a like on this video. It helps out a lot. And if you uh, want to stay up to date with this series, then make sure to subscribe to this channel. And um, yeah, I'll be leaving all this code in my GitHub and you can find it in the first link in the description below. So, see you in the next video. Bye.